Thank you very much. Uh, welcome in Kiev. Welcome uh, uh, in the conference. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, express my gratitude and, and, and thankfulness for, to Lilia. She's been so persistent in, uh, in putting the BIP uh, on the world map. And uh, I'm glad that uh, uh, I took part in the, in the first conference uh, a couple of years ago in Odessa. And since then, you know, for me, uh, at first that it's a one-off event. But then uh, I've seen that uh, you guys are continuing and uh, persisting in pushing forward uh, such innovation as blockchain and distributed ledger in Ukraine. And this is uh, incredible because um, what's happening right now in Ukraine provides uh, great opportunities for new technologies, for uh, open-minded uh, uh, people who would like to uh, uh, to use new things and innovations uh, uh, for for the benefit of the society and uh, uh, and uh, well-being. So uh, thank you very much for the distributed labs and uh, thank you very much for persistence. It's it's really inspiring for us as well for the people who work in the government uh, because uh, for two years we've been also trying to uh, uh, to change the 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 relationships in the economic front, in the financial sector. Uh, it's, been, it's been a very complicated task because uh, Ukraine going from the post-communist uh, era uh, is, is getting into the, and it's bypassing uh, big uh, stages where, where other economies went through for, for decades. We're jumping over and leaping over into the new world. Um, you know, making such a jump is uh, an incredible uh, effort. And uh, we do see that people, it's, it's hard for the people. It's, it's very tough for the perception of, uh, uh, of general, uh, general population. But nevertheless, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's inspiring to see that. Was that me? No? Was it me? No? OK. Uh, I guess I started to say something, something wrong. No? Uh, good. Okay. Um, so, but so it, it's important that we we do lean on each other and and help each other in in uh, you know in getting our ideas through uh, in, in such environment. Um, in the financial sector, for the last two years, we've seen uh, uh, significant. Uh, 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 efforts in, in fixing the banking sector and non-banking sector in Ukraine. Uh, it's, it's never been uh, uh, an engine for economic development. It's been an engine of uh, redistribution of wealth in Ukraine for the last 20 years. Not fair distribution. Uh, and every, every revolution of political change just brought another redistribution. You know, it's never been working for, uh, for the well-being and an accumulation of wealth. Uh, that's, that's you know, my observation in the last couple of years. Uh, what we are trying to do is, is bring more trust between people uh, and, and uh, uh, implement new transparent rules for everyone to operate in and to benefit, uh, benefit for themselves and for the common, uh, common well-being. Uh, we've, we've been trying to, um, to bring in new technologies, uh, including the electronic money. Uh, central bank is, is very focused on paperless economy. Uh, these, uh, these technologies allow us, uh, allow us to, uh, to really uh, you know, put in the fresh blood into the financial sector. Uh, and, and, and try to restart and kickstart the, uh, the economy again. The, uh, the cost of uh, mistake is, is miserable, and that's the beauty of it. Um, there's nothing to lose, and that's what we're trying to share with uh, other members in the market, in the pol political, uh, uh, political circles. In the non-banking non sector, We've, uh, we've been very concerned about cybersecurity, not only just about the new IT uh, uh, solutions, but uh, cybersecurity. Uh, technology has been ignored for many, many, uh, actually, for during the whole existence of the non-banking financial sector, because the bank, non-banking financial sector has been used once, as I said, not for uh, uh, aggregation of, uh, of capital, 
but for redistribution of ownership uh, of, uh, uh, of the assets in Ukraine. You know, you can uh, recall privatization in the 90s, uh, which, uh, which just ended up as a, as a huge, you know, first it, it was a giveaway for the people, but then it was a big ripoff. Uh, we have uh, our depository system and registry of shares. We have about five million of shareholders that don't even open the accounts because their shares are worthless. That's uh, if you put it in the. Uh, I've been with my colleagues. Been we've been trying to develop the analogy. It's like in the securities sector, the exchange rate, for instance, against the major currency would be not like in the real sector in Ukraine, where it's one dollars twenty-seven. Our devaluation is much worse. We have shareholders or depositors that lost everything. Active players in the Ukrainian financial sector, I would say five, 10,000 active traders, investors that, that exist at this stage. And the retail uh, base is totally uh, out. The problem is the lack of rule. There's no rules. There's huge uh, a symmetry of information, and people are taking advantage of each other because each one is in a different uh, stage or has the information that the other don't. And they see that they have the key to success, which is not correct. So a symmetry of information in the Ukrainian non-banking or generally is, is a huge issue. Systemic risks are ignored mostly for the benefit of a short-term uh, short gain. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> security of investor is also at jeopardy. We are not protecting uh, ownership uh, of, uh, uh, of the shareholders. They're, you know, it's, it's, so having these three issues, uh, we took upon uh, you know, ourselves a task to fix these. It's going to be slow. It's going to be challenging. Uh, we need to change the laws. We need to, uh, before we bring the IT, you know, what we've realized, we've, we've tried to, with uh, Lilia and Pavel, we've, we've tried to think, okay, let's, maybe the blockchain is a solution. Let's, let's try to think. But th then we looked at the legal landscape and we realized that, no way, it's not gonna fly because we're gonna create something that's gonna be outlaw. It's not gonna provide uh, participants with the clear guidelines and clear rules uh, for their actions. And that's just going to be uh, another problem like we had before. No rules create abusive situation where uh, you know, risks accumulate and then people when, as we say, situation turns you know, the bad side, people start taking advantage of each other. And that's, that's a common situation. You know, when we see risks, we go for the exit. When there is smoke, there is no rule. And that's, that's what uh, our task is. We've, uh, we've been actively also working with our colleagues uh, in, in, in Europe and, uh, uh, and the States uh, in, in, in trying to identify the uh, potential applications. And, and the conclusions are the same. We need uh, to fight cyber, to establish clear rules for cybersecurity. We need to uh, do a lot in identifying the players. Identification is a huge issue for us. And uh, uh, supervision, supervision of activity uh, of people in the market, no matter which is, it's paperless or it's with paper. You know, the, the form doesn't change the substance. The substance is the key. You know, maybe I can go to people maybe on the 23rd floor who are saying paper is the solution, you know. <laughs> or 22nd floor who say, well, you know, we have another solution. But, but this is not, this is the form. Never, you know, uh, give away the substance for the form. And that's, that's what we've, uh, we've came up to. Uh, so, so at this stage, having uh, all those targets in mind, we're really focusing on, on bringing the rules, getting the laws, and opening uh, the potential of the, Ukra of the Ukrainian uh, economy to you guys. So you could use everything that out there here in Ukraine, 
because, because once again, uh, there is nothing. There is a total, you know, uh, clear landscape for you to build whatever you like. You know, bringing blockchain, like a distributed ledger, uh, smart contracts, you know, you name it. Uh, but once again, the rules need to go first. And uh, we've, uh, uh, we've been also thinking about and already uh, put in the legislature new and innovative solutions like uh, uh, so-called MTFs, multilateral trading facilities, uh, which already operate in, in Europe and North America, where uh, blo uh, bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies can be tradable. And that's that, that, that can be uh, implemented, hopefully, maybe this year, if we get the laws through. Um, so, so you guys can use your technology in, in uh, raising capital for, for your ventures or for small and medium-sized size enterprises through whatever solutions you choose. Um, we also uh, are trying to enforce better uh, uh, information protection rules. Uh, Cybersecurity is the key. It should not be ignored. This is like bread and butter. You know, if you don't protect your information, you know, you're going to be the victim, no matter when. It's going to be. Yeah. We've uh, we've seen in the last two years uh, blackouts of our CSD, Central Depository for Securities. That's been done. You know, that's happened a number of times in the last two years. We've seen blackouts of our exchanges. Uh, and the the worst part is. Nobody noticed. Nobody cared. People pretended that nothing changed, no, nothing happened. OK, two days, blackout, OK. It's like, you know, it's snow outside. Well, spring comes, and it's going to melt. But <clears throat> I don't think this is, a, uh, this is a fair assumption. I think uh, it's, uh, it's a neglection of a key principle that uh, you are losing trust among the people who probably would not come to you and uh, would not do any business with you. So we, we are trying to enforce even those simple rules of data protection on all the market participants. Yes, it's going to raise the, the bar. It's going to raise the entry, entry cost to the system. But well, trust is, is the key. If, uh, 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 you know, if you still think that we can ignore, uh, you know, such problems, uh, we're not going to build a, a solid foundation for the future. So, so that's that's what we're doing. So basically, we're we're doing a lot of kind of cleanup and fixing uh, and and throwing a lot of garbage out of the house before we bringing the new. Or actually, we're actually, you know, ruining the the old barn. For, uh, for the benefit of building a, a new and solid foundation for the, something that, that we can build together. So thank you very much, and thank you for your trust in, in Ukraine. Thank you for, for your trust in, uh, in, uh, in each other. And uh, thank you for the distributed ledger to you know, making this event happening and, and really putting us on the map, uh, on the global map. We're happy to take part further and, and even more often if, if we, uh, you know, if you have forces, we always would have something to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Are there any other questions? If we have any, to Timur Kramer first. So as for the status quo of blockchain and innovation, yes, for sure. Good evening, Anatoly Knesset from Zantek. My question regards the MTFs you mentioned in Ukraine for trading cryptocurrencies and whatnot. Can you add some detail, like what's the status? When can they expect the registration? When could I register an MTF myself? Say, and when can I start operating one? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, the, M the, the MTFs uh, could be established by the operators. And operators, uh, in our legislature, we see it as the exchanges or the, the existing uh, licensees or the new licensees that, uh, that have the capacity uh, to, to run such, uh, such platforms. And uh, um, so, so you would have to fulfill certain standards, yeah? uh, technological, corporate governance, capital. Uh, so these things need to be 
fulfilled first before you qualify for that. Uh, and that's, that's important to make sure that we get credible players to the market. Because you, know, you don't establish your own MTF to trade you know, your own currency. That's, I think, is not correct way. Uh, as an operator, it has to be a core business. Um, so we, we do hope that uh, either existing players or the new players would come in and run such, uh, such, uh, such platforms. Um, the legislature is in the parliament. We've submitted it a couple of weeks ago. Um, so actually, there's a lot already in the parliament. Unfortunately, in the financial sector in the last two years, in our segment, uh, we haven't passed anything. Uh, that, that says a lot uh, because, first of all, the awareness is low. Uh, the politicians don't recognize, to the big extent, what the opportunities are. However, it seems that uh, the general notion is on our side. The banking sector is struggling and will continue struggling for years ahead. It's not going to fund uh, or be able to actively fund the development of the economy in the, in the next, you know, there's a lot of issues to be fixed. Not only taking the bad banks out, but also the fixing, making sure that the existing banks operate under clear, transparent rules, get rid of their non-performing loans, and, and, and put themselves into the active mode of lending. So in light of this, we see that the non-banking sector, uh, equity, uh, bonds, derivatives, they can, you know, they can really you know, uh, work well and provide us with great opportunities. So um, uh, talking about the chances, I think they're pretty high. You know, um, we're not downbeat because somebody doesn't trust us. Well, it's not easy to downbeat us. Yeah? We, we're just speeding up and, and, and making sure that we uh, you know, move faster, you know, uh, present new ideas, present new legislation to the government, and that it's up to them how fast they can, you know, they can digest that and approve. But we believe that uh, we need to already consider even the draft legislation and start thinking about what we're going to do. It's a, it's, a, it's a sign to you, you know, that something good is coming. And no matter what, well, I, I, I doubt that somebody is going to invent something new. It's just a matter of time. Is it going to be tomorrow or maybe end of this year or maybe next year? So, so I think we, we need to be a bit more proactive in terms of and be more positive. You know, I wouldn't you know, give all my optimism to somebody who is just maybe he, he has different priorities. Well, it's up to them, but it's up to us to make sure that we move these things forward. And uh, between us, we can you know, also move our uh, discussion further, not just about the basic laws, about the rules, about potential interest, about potential technology that can be implemented. I've seen a lot of uh, people who are really interested in developing these solutions. Okay? Well, go ahead, start uh, you know, developing your uh, in terms of references, your requirements, do the basics, do the homework. And we have a lot of time for this. Don't wait until you know, it all falls on you and you say, well, God, you know, I have everything. Well, it's not going to happen. So I think uh, we can utilize this time to, uh, to do a lot of things. And that's, that's, that's good. That's great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dumur Hanayev, we are very grateful you have come time for us. Thank you. Thank you so for much. For your time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.